Well, welcome to our online global self-awakening retreat. I'm excited because uh, we're going to be together for nine consecutive days. Um, <clears throat> and I'm curious, like everybody else, how the energy is going to get built up. Uh, originally, when I was designing uh, the retreat, uh, we thought maybe we have a day off in between or two days off in between. And then uh, after contemplating on it for a while, we decided that it's best to have the retreat uh, every day in a row. So we build up the energy. And by cutting it off halfway through, it's possible, it's like you're building up the energy into this balloon and then you don't want to, sometimes you don't want want to let it go, you just want to keep pushing it and see how far it goes uh, to its highest potential. And what happens is when the energy is building up and you stay with it, you stay in this unified field, you stay in this bubble that you have uh, created and been a part of it for it to build up. Then you give yourself a chance to keep your vibrations in a higher frequency and when you're able to keep your vibrations in a higher frequency and you sustain it for a nice period of time, then you really give yourself a chance for things to change in cellular memory old patterns disappear and new information, a brand new consciousness, awareness takes place. But like anything in life, you have to create the right environment for growth. It's like anything, if you're farming and you're planting, you're growing herbs or fruits or whatever, you have to create the right environment. Uh, the temperature has to be right. The humidity has to be right. You have to water and fertilize your products, your farming products, and take care of them and making sure that they don't get eaten up or walked over by animals uh, to break the branches. So you have to protect yourself and the environment of your spiritual growth when you're doing this work if you want to get positive result. Otherwise, you can be running around and doing a lot of different practices and you don't get any results and it just res it ends into frustration and um, you give up. And we don't want that. We want to be steady we don't need to go too fast, but we go steady and we stay with the energy. Um, when we're doing this work, a lot of this is going to be in, in a way that it's not visible. So we may be, after a couple hours being in this energy, um, I would recommend afterwards you take, you pause and take a little bit of time by yourself and not jump back into uh, the world and picking up the phone, calling, uh, getting engaged with domestic matters, just or getting in front of the TV or the computer and getting involved with the news, kind of allow things to kind of settle in and take a little bit of time, stay in silence and let this energy that we're building up to do its work and give it the opportunity for transformation. Uh, there's a little bit of an echo I'm hearing from, I don't know where it's coming from. So I'd like to welcome you all. Um, I'm happy we're here together. We have this opportunity. 
Um, I do have people come to me and feel like this is a bad time and uh, this is a disaster what is happening around the world with COVID-19 and um, its effects as far as the pressure is put on a lot of people emotionally. There's a lot of breakdowns and also financially and eco economically. I mean, besides the fact of the dangers of being, a, being exposed to a virus, uh, there's a lot of other things that a lot of people are concerned about. But I've learned throughout my life to also look at the positive sides of whenever something happens and it seems like it's uh, a disaster or it's unpleasant event or a situation, I've also learned to look at the positive sides of it. Uh, I would call it to turning the, the poison into medicine. And being able to look at, okay, what kind of blessings, what kind of gifts this situation that has forced me to stay home or not be active or uh, like now what is going on, what does it offer? What, what does it bring to me? How can I turn this into my advantage? And I see a golden opportunity right now for all of us, for humanity, to transform those who are ready, who, those who are willing, and they're the seekers of the truth. This is a golden opportunity to go through a transformation and use this opportunity to do inner work and reflecting and going deeper within instead of being focused on the other world. So for those of you who are with me for the first time and uh, we, you have not been at my academy or any of my workshops or teachings or lectures, whether in California or in Europe, um, let me just briefly give you an idea of uh, what my teachings are about. So this teachings is not a belief. Absolutely, it's not a belief. It's not dogmatic. It's not based on a set of rules of do this or do that. Um, it's not a religion and it's not a cult. And in what I encourage in this teachings is <clears throat> focus on only that which is your own experience. Only trust your own direct experience. Not what anybody's telling you, or you've read this, or you've read that, or it's because everyone's believing in one way or not. Because that is knowledge, and it's not knowing. There's a big difference between knowledge and knowing. And if you do cultivate this in your psyche, and you use this as your motto, then you have created an environment for growth because you have expanded your mind and you have created the opportunity to free yourself from the slavery that majority of human beings on this planet are under. It's a form of slip, uh, slavery. And I'll get into that and explain to you that how that is happening and what the deal is with it. So there's a big difference in what you experience through your own experiments and you have discovered in comparison to what you 
have heard about or you read about or you've seen in TV or uh, on internet. Knowing is a direct experience. It's something that you have experienced yourself and you have discovered firsthand. Knowledge is borrowed information. Now, if you dig into yourself and your life and your belief system and check in to see what is it you really know in this life. What have you learned? And you distinguish the difference and you start to cutting the fat out, starting to take out knowledge, then you may be surprised to find out how little we really know, yet it may be enough to carry on, but the rest of what, what we think we know is just simply borrowed information, and that's all. I'm just going to use an example, and uh, it, is, it could sound a little bit silly, this example, but just bear with me and hang in there. For example, in the 21st century, there's barely, very little, most humanity believes that the planet Earth is round. And of course, uh, if somebody comes and says, no, the planet Earth is flat, that person will be ridiculed. So, but how do we know if I'm to be honest with myself and I'm going to examine and how do I know the planet Earth is, is round? I never got into a space shuttle to get out of the Earth atmosphere or go into the space to be able to take a look and see whether the planet Earth is round or flat. In fact, very little number of human beings been able to get out of, uh, get into the space and examine that for themselves. Or, I've never walked around the planet Earth, so physically examining, examining it that Okay, I'm just going to go walk around planet Earth and starting from this point, which I'm in Los Angeles right now, and go around the planet and come back to this same point. Um, and I don't know of anyone who's done it. So, it's not my direct experience. I have not discovered that for myself. So, I simply accepting the information which is being presented to me. So from childhood, when I went to school, they told me planet Earth is round. They've shown me pictures of it. Uh, there's plenty of footage from NASA and other space agencies that they give us this information that the planet Earth is round. But that's not my own direct experience. I haven't discovered that for myself. So I'm just using this as an example. So when we're, I'm reading, I'm getting information about different subjects, whether it's medicine, it's science, um, whatever that is. Did I really come to this understanding and by myself, or this is some something I have read, and I'm simply simply accepting the information that I'm getting as truth. But I don't know it myself. I have no idea if it is true or not, because I didn't go through it. So, my, my, my suggestion to you is that you are on this self-realization path. You are 
seeking. And the number one thing is really to do reflection within ourselves to see, okay, what is it I'm really looking for? What am I seeking? And somebody may say, well, I want self-realization, I want to awaken, I want to become one with God and then be able to help other people. Uh, I'm looking for love, I'm looking for inner peace. I had a very rough childhood and I'm dealing with a lot of emotional issues because I was raped or beaten up or abandoned or have problems trusting and I need to work on that. Um, someone else may be interested in somehow creating a system that they can manifest and find their soulmate or, or increasing their wealth. Whatever, I don't know what your reasons are. Maybe someone has physical issues and they're hoping they can find a way to heal themselves or we have different reasons that we come together. But at the core of this is that each and every human being on this planet basically wants to be happy. Everybody wants to be happy. And everybody wants to be loved and accepted. Now you may have a wicked way to have happiness, to reach it, or being loved and accepted. But basically, uh, happiness is something everyone's looking for. Satisfaction. Or inner peace. I discovered that Back into what I originally started to explain to you is what do I do and what is this work about is, is an exploration of the inner world. And through questioning it, through doubting things, through trying to figure it out as and then as an experience and experimenting not to believe in anything that I have not discovered being open to suggestions and discovery of other teachers uh, other literatures whatever is giving me a clue but not blindly following it it must be my own direct experience so it has value. Otherwise, it becomes a belief. And it's shaky. It's not rooted in strong foundation. You have to discover the truth for yourself through a direct experience. Any other teachings or methods is not serving us. So we need to be very clear about that. For example, religion is about belief. It's not about doubt. It's about believing in something. But what I teach and share is similar to science. Science is based on doubt. You're doubting things until it's proven otherwise. And the same way is here. You want to doubt the teachings until you have discovered it for yourself. And it's your direct experience. The difference between this and science is science is exploring into the utter world. And my teaching is about exploration of the inner world. But we question things till we discover it for ourselves, whether it's true or not. Okay?
What I discovered in this exploration of the inner world, um, I have been lucky, I've been um, blessed by coming across a number of awakened beings and many, many different angels and guides that they have guided me and they gave me the clue and and through the grace of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, the Supreme Intelligence, I was lucky to be guided despite all the stuff that I've done and all the ups and downs I've had that I was able to discover my path and I was lucky that I could stay on this path and be focused on it and discover the treasures that was hidden within myself. And I would have not been able to do it if it wasn't through the grace of my teachers. And uh, out of that, I'm very grateful. And I felt like it's truly time for me to share this with the world and share this with my audience and anyone who is interested, uh, who wants to benefit from this. And they also would like to find out for themselves the path to inner peace and inner happiness. So. I look at the world, I look at life, and it's an ever-changing endeavor that is constantly changing from one thing to another. And very quickly I realized that as soon as I'm trying to hang on to a part of it, it changes to something else. So this life that I live in is based on constant change. And very quickly I realized that I can't invest on a life and a world that is completely changing from one thing to another and I'm trying to make sense out of it and try to create this idea of security in it. I'm trying to figure out a way that I feel secure in it. And obviously I'm looking at everybody else around me who's trying to do the same thing. And as I grew up and as wisdom came, I realized that such a thing does not exist in that, in that sense. A security in the world, to secure myself in the world based on a world that is changing constantly. But through that, by recognizing that's not where my safety and security is, and through this constant change, I realize that there is something which is changeless. Everything constantly is changing, including my thoughts, my thought stream. Sometimes it increases, it's higher, sometimes it's lower. Lower. My emotions, they're constantly changing. And a lot of times my moods, it's based on the news that I get and based on what is happening in my surrounding, whether things are going my way or they don't. When things go my way, I'm very happy, I'm satisfied, I'm at peace. And then when things don't go my way, I crash. I'm upset, I'm depressed, I'm afraid. I, I'm not satisfied. 
And for me, that wasn't good enough. And also, seeing my body, how the body is changing, and as it's aging, all kinds of different things happen to it. It's got its malfunctions. It doesn't repair your, itself as quickly as it used to. Um, something that I trusted, something I thought I inherited, and something that I invested in as believing this is who I am. And so as I'm going forward in this path, I start to recognize things, realize things, that all of these things are changing all the time. If I start with myself, is my mind, my thoughts, my desires, my constant ever-changing emotions, and my body. Then if I take my attention outside of myself, and I bring my focus to the outer world, then, which is constantly changing, the fashion, the auto industry, the economy, the weather, the world weather, climate changing, governments coming and going, systems changing, countries, in my lifetime I've seen countries dissolving and coming together. I have seen countries disappear and a new countries being born. So even countries are not on solid ground and they're insecure. Also Earth, the planet Earth that we're standing on and we're living on it and we're being fed by it and supported, it's changing all the time. There's volcanoes, there's hurricanes, there's climate change, there is um, all kinds of different things, fires. So it's formation changes and it looks changes. And sometimes it can be very intense and or subtle. So how many times does the rug have to be pulled from under my feet for me to wake up, to not put my investment and trust on something that is constantly changing? How many times does that have to happen? How many times I fell in love with a woman and I thought this is the one and she walked away. Or I got tired of her, or something happened, or life took us to separate ways. Or death separated us, or whatever. How many times I thought financially I'm secure, and I got all my plans and everything is exactly the way I want it and that fell apart. How many people have been millionaires and billionaires and they've lost everything in an economic shift? Or you may say they made bad investments or, or whatever happened. We can see it happening right now. How many times you've seen Governments fall apart. Kingdoms disappear. How many famous people fell off grace? Whether they're spiritual teachers or they're religious leaders or politicians or musicians, actors, athletes. That are, they're on top of their game and something happened and they fell off the grace.
How many people you know that they put all their time, investment, their energy, their life into securing themselves for retirement? And they finally got to the age, let's say 65, and they retired. And then two months after, they're diagnosed with a brain tumor, cancerous tumor, or liver, liver cancer. And then after all this investment, all this time of trying to secure themselves, then they just die. And everything's gone. A lifetime of hard work and savings and investing, all of it is gone. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but it happens enough for me to realize that what I'm looking for is not out there in the world, it's not in another human being, it's not in a lover, it's not in a soulmate, it's not in my parents or my children or anything. None of it is safe and secure. And all of it can change at any moment from one thing to another thing. You can examine that. I highly recommend that you examine that for yourself. I highly recommend that you doubt everything I tell you because I encourage you to do that. Doubt it, but go and check it out for yourself. Look into it. But when you do look at things and you start to turn your attention inwards and you commit to an inner exploration, an inner journey, so the attention starts to shift, a shift of attention, simply a shift of attention. Rather than me putting my attention on the outer world, I start to turn my attention in the inner world. And sort of rejecting what is changing. Sort of not putting my attention on that which changes. Then a phenomena starts to take place. Something's shifting. Some, something begin to reveal itself. I may get a glimpse of an infinite and unlimited vastness of a space that is always here, it's always within me, and it's never changing. I may get a glimpse of a changeless, but that changeless is not my body, it's not my mind, and it's not my emotions. And by getting a glimpse of the changeless, my investment on the changeless begins to go down and I begin to invest on that which doesn't change. I'm going to elaborate on that because <clears throat> So it's not really abstract and you have something you can relate to and you can understand it. I've spoken about this many times in my academy, in my lectures, teachings. Uh, but I want to put it in a very simple language. And I want to give you a direct message. For, to all spiritual teachers, 
uh, I'm sorry, to all spiritual seekers, that which we're looking for, whatever you want to name it, happiness, satisfaction, God realization, true love, any anything you like to name it and anything that is what is tickling and pulling you and that's the fire in your heart that is drawing you towards this happiness towards this inner peace this towards this security towards this place that you want some answers so you can make sense of what is happening in the world surrounding you whatever is the drive force is taking you inwards has brought you this morning brought all of us here at this time and has got our attention you have to trust that that is a force inside yourself that is guiding you and yearning for awakening something inside us has been activated in a very mysterious ways however we met however we came across each other whether it was YouTube, Facebook, whether you've been at my academy, whether we met somewhere and we ended up here, whatever, somebody told you about this. If you're here and we're together in this, something, some intelligence, something which is way beyond my thinking abilities is at work here. And I've learned to trust that. The pure truth, the essence of the purity of that which doesn't change, it reveals itself to itself at the very right time in your and my spiritual evolution. It won't come any earlier and it won't come any later. It will appear at the exact perfect time. So you can trust yourself and your intuitive knowing for your decisions and for where you're at in this point, at this point in life. And trusting that, you may want to take a few moments to look inside, to look within yourself. And maybe, maybe, you discover the truth of who you are. That which you are looking for is already inside yourself and it's waiting to be discovered by you, is crying out, is yearning to be discovered. And I'm going to give this to you in a very simple way. It is possible that today, right now, by the end of this meeting, you become fully realized. Completely as self-realization happens. Only by following one simple thing. But you have to pay attention to this. And you have to be fully present with for this there is a master inside you the Buddha 
the enlightened one, enlightened one, any name you like to call it, Jesus Christ, Krishna, Moses, Muhammad, any name you like to give it and that name triggers you to your higher self, your fifth dimensional self, your divine being. It's already inside yourself and it's not something you're going to gain because if you gain it, you can also lose it. This part of you is always here. It's a space, or we can call it a being. It's a space which is already within yourself. It's a space that never changes. It's always steady, it's always still, and it's always watching. This part of you has nothing to do with your emotional ups and downs. And it has nothing to do with your, the stream of your thoughts. And it has nothing to do with your physical body. If you can turn your attention inwards and see this part of yourself and keep your attention on it, you will go through an instant realization. Instantly. You will realize yourself. And that can happen right now in this moment. And your mind will come and tell you, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. You know, I've been drinking or boozing and playing and da 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 or I left my partner or my kids and I've been beaten up or raped or da 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 or I just smoke cigarettes or I do this and I that. Ignore what your mind tells you because none of that has anything to do with the truth of who you are. The divine presence the Master, Lord God, that resides inside you and everyone else, regardless of your past behavior, doesn't really give a shit about what you think. It doesn't have judgments on your past action. It's only your mind that is a big cloud between you and the blue sky. And those are thoughts, like a thick fog that is cluttering your vision. If you can go past that, and look inside and simply not pay any attention to your story, the story that your mind keeps telling you, and look inside, you will see this part of you that is simply still, silent, and just observing. And it's been there all of your life. It's always still, pure, untouched, and in a state of observation. And if you bring your attention inwards and take a look, you will see that. You will discover this part as the Hindus in Sanskrit, they call it the Atma.
it's not really difficult. And you have had glimpses of yourself many, many times. It's just we're not trained. There's no guidance from our childhood to pay attention to this part of us, ourselves. Everything is designed for us to look outside. So we're looking for it outside. No one has ever told us to look inside. We go to psychics, channelers, healers, teachers. We're, look, we're asking, looking for it for somebody else. Or we're interested in the UFOs or conspiracy stories or whatever, or space. We're trying to find it somewhere outside. And it's not there. There's a reflection of it on the outside, but that which you're looking for is inside yourself. You are who you're looking for. And I'll give you some clues that's going to help you with this. Again, I said it before, doubt everything that you know, you think you know, everything you've read, everything you heard, put everything away. All the information you've accumulated in your life, put everything away for one moment. Just be innocent and be in this place that you don't know anything. All your ideas about spirituality, about God, about how to be spiritual, how to be holy, what is it you need to do and not do. Put everything away for a moment. Just be innocent. Like you don't know anything. They're not going to help you. They just hold you back. You have to drop everything and turn inwards and shift your attention inside and by bringing your attention inside you are bringing your attention to that part of you which is simply aware and witnessing and in that shift that you are doing in this change in this movement of the attention that is very much focused on the outer world, on the politics, on geology, on economy. It's very involved with these things. Or it's very much involved with being righteous and doing the right thing. Or blah, 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 whatever that is. You're shifting. the attention and in that shift you are ignoring your past you're ignoring the future you're ignoring all these stories that your mind tells you everything you're declining and ignoring and you're just bringing your attention to one point within and you will get a glimpse of the observer of the witness. Something inside you is witnessing. 
So as you bring your attention, the first step that what happens is you become a witness of your body, of your body activities. And as the awareness comes, you're slowly not being a robot. You're not being mechanical. You're just observing yourself from inside. You're observing your body. What does your body do? You're becoming aware of your physical activities. You're making that your job of just watching what does my body do throughout the day. Which no one ever tells us that. So you start to watch it. Then, as you do that, then you begin to observe your thoughts. I'm not talking about, don't fall into this trap, and I want to be very clear about this so there is no misunderstanding about this because people come and tell me oh Zarathustra yeah I've been uh, looking at my thoughts and I've been trying to think positive and I'm not talking about positive thinking or positive visualization or manifesting and you keep thinking of something you want so it manifests and you don't say any b wrong words so you manifest the right thing. I'm not talking about any of that, okay? Please pay attention. Don't come back to me later on and tell me I said that. I've never said that. You're simply aware of your thoughts. You're watching your mind. And sometimes your mind is heavy and comes with all these bombardments, bombarding you with thoughts especially on a Monday morning, especially if you get some bad news, especially if you've been rejected by someone that you're attracted to, or your kids, or something, or whatever, or you got some bad news from your doctor. It's always related to someone, something external, outside of you. So you have an awareness of your mind coming with all these thoughts, and you're simply watching it. As if you're standing watching a parade passing in front of you. You're simply being a mirror you are observing your thoughts. You are observing your emotions. The thoughts are much faster. But you can see the totality. The, the content of what is going on. You are not trying to hang on to every single thought. You are simply aware of mind bombardments, of a series of thoughts, of whatever story is happening in your mind, whatever news you're receiving in your head, you're simply aware of what is going on. And you're, by sta you're standing outside. You're not a participant in your thought pattern and thought stream. You're simply observing it. And then comes your emotions, strong, changing emotions. And as you're just there watching, you take the position of being like a mirror. A mirror doesn't care if a pretty face comes and looks 
the gorgeous, beautiful face of a man or a woman or whatever is looking in a mirror, the mirror reflects that back. And then an ugly face comes and looks, and the mirror doesn't have any kind of story about that either. It simply is reflection. Its job is to be there, not to judge. You do the same thing with your own thoughts and emotions coming and going. You're simply watching them. You're not judging anything. Oh, I'm such a bad person because I'm wishing I don't want to spend time with my parents or I'm such a bad person because I don't really want to be with my kids or I'm such a bad person because I have these strong sexual desires. I'm such a bad person because of this, because of that. Your fears, your depression, whatever comes, you're simply aware of it. You're simply watching it. But there is no judgments. There is no story about it. Then you go into the third level. You go into the heart. And you're watching the subtle. You are refining because you're doing the work. You have been in the first step, stage of watching the thoughts because you're doing the inner work, work, so your attention is here. So you have seen the thoughts come and go. You're seeing these emotions, strong emotions, strong passion. You get so fiery about things, especially if someone says something that really touches your prejudice, your conditioning, your conditioned mind. Someone is triggering your emotions because you're so passionate about whatever. Your football team, your basketball team, your soccer team, your nation, your way of thinking, your religion, your guru, your actors, actresses, your politicians, you're so passionate about it. Now you're just watching, watching these. And then you start to refine. And now you're looking, you're more diving into the heart. The more the awareness comes, like there is 10% awareness and there's 90% thoughts. But the more you're just remaining at this place of simple observation without any kind of involvement, the greater is the awareness and the, and the thoughts and the stream of the thoughts and powerful emotions go down. They start to reduce. It's slowly, slowly going down and more awareness is taking place. Now you're coming into the subtle stuff. Because your attention is on the watcher. You're being the watcher. And the subtle things that changes your mood, you're becoming aware. A very, very subtle stuff. Now you can see them too. How they change your moods how they take you, control you, make you react to things. They can trigger you with these fears or whatever, or whatever comes.
And as you're just refining yourself by simply staying in your seat, you're staying in this place of simple observation. Simply not giving in into getting involved with whatever is going on. Life wants to pull you, get you involved with politics, with the issues of the day, with COVID-19, with global warming, global changing, blah, blah, blah. There's all these things dancing in front of you and trying to pull you out of your center, but you're refusing to come out of your center. You are committed to stay into this position of simply being an observer, being a witness, not getting involved with what you're witnessing, not getting involved with the story that is happening in your head or surrounding you. Awareness is coming. You're not being no longer a robot that you can get triggered and react because that's what you have done all your life, reacting to what triggers you. Now you're staying in this place of no reaction. You refuse to react to whatever. Someone comes and tells you you're an asshole. Someone comes and tells you you're atheist. Someone will come and tell you you're a traitor. Someone will come and tell you that you're a bad mom, you're a bad person, you're whatever. You're irresponsible. You are practicing absolutely committed to not reacting and not getting involved with anything except staying focused and your commitment to simply being the witness and nothing else. Something you've never committed to, yet your heart is pure. You're sincerely seeking love, truth, inner peace, and God. But you never committed to simply being the witness. And now you're doing that. Because you have nothing to lose. This is free and doesn't ask you for anything. It doesn't ask you to change your hairstyle. It doesn't ask you to become a nun or celibate or go move to India or go to a Buddhist monastery, change your diet, give up your family, your loved ones. It doesn't ask you these things. It has no requirements. Nothing externally needs to change. Accept your commitment to being still and not reacting to nothing, anything in the outer world and anything in your inner world. You are simply staying at this place, still. Like a ninja Jedi still firmed in your position of the witness. And then the fourth stage happens automatically. Every awakened being arrived in this place. If others have done it, you can do it too. 
if there are people who have liberated themselves in this life and they came to full realization and they realized inner peace and they found the kingdom of heaven within themselves, they came to ultimate happiness, then you can do it too. The fourth stage happens that you are utterly aware of all the movements that are happening internally in you. Your thoughts, your emotions, your body. And you're just watching. And as this trans transaction is happening, this transition of a movement from the head from analytical thinking to simply being. It's a journey that takes place. You're migrating. It's a migration. It's a shift in your consciousness. An expansion is taking place. Something's opening up through being the witness, through being quiet. You're still, you're silent. You're not getting involved in any stories. You're not getting involved in any debates. You're not trying to prove your opinion to anybody. You're not trying to convert anyone or asking for anyone's approval because you don't care. You are only focusing on being the witness and being still and being quiet, ignoring everything else, selfishly. And then you will discover a quantum leap happens, a shift in your consciousness happens through this expansion and this opening, you begin to discover yourself into the center of awareness, in the center of yourself. Awareness becoming aware of itself. An expansion starts to happen. Space is created. Vast space, vast amount of space is created. And many different things as byproduct of this transaction and this transition, this journey from the head to the heart, many different things start to happen. Your heart begins to open. You develop being compassionate. You become sensitive. A lot of psychic powers may come to you. You may be able to develop the ability to heal. You may become clairaudient, hearing things, claircognizant, the ability to know clairsentient, the ability to sense things, clairvoyant, to see things, because expansion begins to happen. You're waking up, you're becoming a real human being from being a robot. You feel things, and knowing and wisdom begin to take place, because you begin to know yourself. You begin to realize the truth of who you are versus who you were brainwashed to believe you were, who you thought you were. Because when we're asleep and who we think we are is ugly, 
it's needy, it's lonely, it's desperate, it's always in fear. Do you really like to look at yourself? Are you proud when you look at yourself in a mirror? Is this who you want to be? Living in fear, worry, anxiety, and always with your begging bowl that maybe someone gives you some love or something? Or a little attention? Is this who you are supposed to be all your life? And with the change of wind and climate, your life completely turns ups and downs? Economy changes, government changes, the world temperature changes, and all of a sudden you're in fear and anxiety. Is this who you think you are? That small. Or you really want to take the chance and discover who you are? Are you willing to sacrifice everything for awareness? Are you willing to compromise, to be efficient, to be mechanical so you can produce more or add more objects to your life or you're willing to, to invest in your awareness and to be awake and aware and to realize who you are is immune to fear and depression and heartbreak, and ups and downs. Do you really want to find out who you are? Because you're a lot more than what you think you are. You're vast. And at the center of your being, you carry the torch and the power of love. The true love comes from you. You are the center of that, not from someone else or a circumstance. You're the one who generates that. You're the one who have God inside you. How can you forget this and fall asleep and become a beggar when you're the king? When you're the queen, not a beggar. For that, we need to turn inwards to discover the truth of who we are, not who we think we are. And I think it's worth the investigation since we have nothing to lose and everything to gain. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Again, I mentioned this in the beginning. I said, this is not a belief. This is not a cult. This is not dogmatic. I asked you to question everything. Question me. Question everything. I want you to find this out for yourself. Discover this for yourself directly. No literatures, no system, no nothing that someone else has said. You go inside and turn your intention inwards and see what you find. Look for the witness. Look for this part of you which is always here and still and it's unchanging.
anybody has any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer your question to the best of my ability. You can either wave at me or unmute yourself or uh, you can write on a chat box and then I will unmute you and we can talk with each other. And, uh, and don't be afraid to ask your question. It doesn't matter. If it feels to you it's silly, it doesn't matter. You, it won't make any difference. Hi, Pietra. Hi, Zoe. Hi. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Um, Please. I practice the awareness of being with myself, um, but still it's like I, um, I'm thrown off my center maybe when someone attacks me or through when I'm uh, in my job or something like this. And is it only the practice that makes that I can stay in my center or is it something else that you can tell me <laughs> right. how I can manage to, to stay there? Because sometimes it's difficult for me um, yeah, in, in daily life to stay there. I'm much more aware of this. Sometimes I realize, oh, okay, I'm outside again. I have to go to myself. But, but it's still shifting. Right. Okay. So the one thing you can do is, so you mentioned first that, uh, first thing you said is sometimes at work somebody attacks you or they say something that you feel offended or they're insulting you or they throw you off of your center yeah. correct yeah. so one thing you want to do is maybe you want to write a note for yourself and every day before you go to work you tell yourself i'm looking forward in someone trying to throw me out of my center today so you're consciously walking into your work environment, inviting somebody to come to say something which normally triggers you. So you're going to use your work environment, turning the poison into medicine and being grateful for someone to come and insult you because you're going to use them and their insult to practice being still. So you shift it. It's a perception. What was a threat before and you were trying to avoid it, now you're welcoming it to challenge you because you want to use them and use that opportunity to practice being still. You, you, you understand? Now you're walking into this situation with awareness instead of being mechanical and avoiding the situation so you don't react. Now you're welcoming it, fully being aware of it. Because every day something happens that existence provide us with an opportunity to practice being still, to keeping your attention on the witness. Every day something happens. If you pay attention to it, it's literally every day. Some days it's more than other days. But from a very subtle way and to extreme, existence creates opportunities. And not looking at it as a malice intention that God is punishing you or you've been bad or you've done something wrong or you're unconscious. Recognizing that we're in this school, this dimension 
is a dimension of training. It's a training program for human beings, the souls, coming into this dimension to experience and learn what we need to learn in this dimension. And there's a lot of people wanting to change this world. They want to change the world. There's nothing wrong with this world. This world, uh, with all its screwed up stuff, all its darkness, is absolutely a necessity. For these spiritual warriors to enter into this school to learn what we need to learn. So you're in the right place and you're doing a good job. Just every day add up a little bit of awareness to it. Be patient with yourself. Your mind will come and judge you. Your mind will come and tell you that you're don't you didn't get it. You're not on it. It will come up with all kinds of stuff. Ignore your mind. Don't pay attention to it. And every day add a little bit of awareness to your work, to your day. And soon you will see, as your vibration starts to change, the more you bring the awareness in your daily life, and you know, you can forget the days that you have completely get identified and completely get into a fight or go into fear, worry, anxiety. That's okay. Don't beat yourself up that you failed. Know that you're on the right path. Know that God loves you. Know that you have a deep love for self-realization. And this is a part of the process. You're welcome. And then you will see, as your vibration starts to rise through being aware, the utter world will change to your new level of awareness. It must. You cannot be vibrating in this frequency and be in this dimension. As your vibration changes, you, the reflection of the world you deal with will change according to where you're at. Okay? Yeah, yeah you. you're welcome. Hi, Hakem. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Okay, let's... You're, you're not, you're, let me see, I lost you. You need to unmute yourself, please. There's a gentleman here. Okay, yeah, I, I, I can't hear you. Uh, let's see, okay. I don't know what's going on here. Somehow, I, let me see, I'm going to try again. All right, can you say something? You yeah, I can hear you now, great. Good, yeah. So it's, it's like I'm on two different cell phones. So it's, okay. <laughs> okay. First of all, Sata, sir, I would like to say thank you. Uh, I met you, one thing is this, this, this air. But, but also I met you at the free or something. At, at where? Uh, it was at the, the alternative fair in are, Right. Are you, what country are you from, if I may ask? Norway. Norway. Okay. So we met in Norway in Lillestrom, probably. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. It was, uh, well, it was instrumental. It was very important for me. Uh, so that was, that was one thing. <laughs> I have actually the Petra. She 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 asked some of the same question I want. 
but since I have a, a Sean on here, um, I am working this beautiful girl, um, and I, I, my previous dog was also working with me as a healer and uh, and some other stuff, and I find it a ch challenge. Because uh, you talk about being in your in your own energy, uh, and when so together with it's like getting forward. <laughs> So I'm sorry, I don't quite understand. Can you just in one sentence uh, tell me? You're training her as my familiar. Uh, she's a rescue dog. Okay. She has some, some issues, uh, and and I'm I, I don't have any formal shaman training though. I'm training in Tibetan salon and stuff like that. So I wonder if you have any tips on how to work with with your your familiar your your our animal um, when when it's, it's in the physical okay yeah uh, basically as i mentioned before is this is an inner job so you kind of have to reject everything in the utter world and turn the attention inwards and look for the witness. Something inside me, please everyone pay attention, bring your attention here because this is important and this is going to really help you. How do you hear your thoughts? How do you know your thoughts? If somebody comes and say, oh, Zarathustra, I got these thoughts bombardments. My mind is driving me crazy. Or how, or my emotions, I got all these strong emotions coming. And I feel sad or depressed or f f whatever is the story. How do you know that? How do you know that your mind is troubling you? Have you ever questioned that? Has anyone ever questioned? We're always looking for a remedy to solve our problems in life. Especially if it's emotional issues or mind bombardment. We're trying to figure out a way of how to ease, put the fire out, okay? But nobody is pay, looking at this, that how do I know that I have these thought bombardments? How do I know that I got this emotional turmoil? You've never asked that question. But you want to find a way to put out the fire to feel good. So we're gonna, we take a lot of workshops. We go see psychiatrists, psychologists to work with our emotions to fix our past issues with our parents or our conditioning or we've been traumatized. Or we go to our gurus or spiritual teachers for learning techniques to manifest things. But we never ask this question, how do I know that I have these thought bombardments? Well, you say, well, because I know. But how do you know that? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Have you ever questioned that? How do I know that I got this depression or fear or anxiety? How do I know it?
you know it because it gets compared to something inside you that doesn't change and is not affected. I'm going to say that again so it clicks, so you grog. It, it, it goes in because it's like, ooh, what was that, Zarathustra? What did you just say? Let me use a simple example. How do you measure how much snow has fallen on the ground? For those of you who live in areas that it snows and you get... 5 inches, 10 inches, or 1 meter, depending what kind of system you're using. And how do I measure things? Because the ground is zero, and whatever amount of snow accumulates on zero ground, something that doesn't change, because the ground doesn't go up and down. So the ground is zero, and anything above that or below that is either positive or negative. So if I have a meter of snow on it, that's how I measure it, from zero to one meter. The same thing happens with your emotions and thoughts. How do you know you have depression, or you have something, or you have thoughts, because they get compared to something inside you that doesn't change. Something inside you doesn't change. It's not affected by your emotions or your thoughts. It's still. Something inside you, the Buddha, the witness, the one that I was referring to, that bring your attention inwards and find the witness Something inside you is witnessing everything. It's still. And that's how you know that you have a lot of thoughts, because a lot of thoughts gets compared to that part. Your attention, your problem is like me. I was there, I did that. For years and years and years, just like you are doing it, your attention is on your thoughts. So you go take all kinds of different courses and put a lot of time, your energy, your money, trying to fix the thoughts. But you don't need to do any of that. All you do is bring your attention to that place which is aware of the thoughts, but not what it's aware of. Forget about the content. Keep your attention on the part of you which is aware, but not what it's aware of. And then you will see that nothing is happening. It's very quiet and it's very still. Because all of your thoughts, the measure of your thoughts is being compared to this part. If you didn't have this part in you, you would have never known that you have mind bombardments. Because if you were your thoughts, if that's your identity, what you're thinking, your, pre, your thinking process is who you are, then you would have never known. You would have never known that you have thoughts and you're haunted by your thoughts. Something must be unchanging that is aware of that which is changing all the time. Your thoughts are in a constant Movement. It's a stream of thoughts constantly going. Sometimes they're slow, sometimes they're fast, sometimes there's gap of silence in between. Like when you're looking up in the sky and there's a lot of clouds, sometimes 
there's patches of clouds. In between two clouds, you see the sun, you see the blue sky. Sometimes it's constant, it's all cloudy. And the same thing. Same thing if you didn't have this part that's not changing, you would not be able to say, oh, I woke up this morning and I'm very happy, or I woke up this morning and I feel very depressed. Depression against what? What is depression is being compared to that you're aware of it? Because the real you is not changing and is not affected and it's still that real you is aware of depression traveling through and is able to report it. But your problem is your attention is on what is traveling through. You identify with it. So then you suffer. My job is to make you realize that the truth of who you are. You're the one who's observing depression. You're not depression. Bring your attention to that part. And then you see no emotion has any power over you. It's only when it's there you feel it and then it's gone. Contemplate on that. Hi, Tanas. Welcome back. Hi. Hi. Nice seeing you again. Nice to see you too. Mm -hmm. And thank you for all the clarification. That's You're welcome. Nice. You're welcome. And you have a question for me? Yeah. Um, so what if when I'm going inside, I'm um, discovering that something that's always there is just the sadness. Are you sad 24-7, 24, 24 hours a day, every day? No, but it's, it's, it's a deep sadness. It's like... Right. Deep. But it's not there all the time, is it? No. So it comes and goes? Um, or, it's, say it. or its measure goes up and down? Sometimes it's more sad, sometimes it's less. I don't know how to put it into words. <laughs> but it's something you're aware of. And it's something that that's haunting you. No, it's not haunting me. Then it's what is the problem? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, good question. <laughs> um, maybe it's like a part of me that just needs like nurturing I'm not really sure right yeah a part of all of us needs nurturing absolutely we're not machines we're human beings <laughs> and we have emotions and we love and we experience sorrow and sadness and happiness and we can get afraid and there's nothing wrong with feeling these emotions. Awakening to the truth of who we are does not mean that, because I used to think that when I was with Master Papaji Punjaji, my sad guru, I was thinking that this man is probably never goes through heartbreak, never goes to feeling of being rejected, never feels sad, never gets depressed, never gets angry. I used to think that, but the more I observed him, I noticed that he gets angry, he gets impatient with idiots, he gets, or circumstances. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And if his son dies, he, he cries. So he wasn't a machine. But I also realized years after 
that he wasn't really identified with his emotions. He experienced them, he expressed them when they were happening, but he didn't define himself based on his emotions. Sometimes I find sadness to be something beautiful. Like I'll listen to like some really like deep sad song and it makes me cry, but I, I like it. I like, I put the song on repeat and I, I keep listening to it because it makes me feel alive. I 100% agree with you. I was listening to this song that I really love and it was bringing these emotions and I probably listened to the same song 500 times in past two weeks and I learned the lyrics to the song for the first time. The only song in my life that I was able to memorize the lyrics. So, and sometimes it brought treat tears in my eyes a lot of times it brought joy, and I love it. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with feeling sad. It's a very beautiful emotion. It really opens your heart and brings you in touch with a deeper part of yourself. So that part, there's nothing wrong with it. But the fact that you're able to observe there is a knowing that there is sadness there. That knowing doesn't get affected. You still have the ability to know that there is sadness and you have the ability to know that there is no sadness. But sometimes it's like I find it hard to just, um, it feels... Even if I'm like enjoying the sadness or whatever it is that's um, like awakening in me that I feel alive, but like I feel like I want there to be someone else there to comfort me and like have that depth in them or like they feel the same. So I um, like kind of just... Um... Yeah, I, I get that. That... Look, this is a very natural phenomena. We all deal with it. I don't care who you are, where you are, whether you're tall or short, rich or poor, and what religion, what color, what belief system anybody has. There is this deep sense of loneliness. Not aloneness, loneliness. And maybe tomorrow, if somebody reminds me, I can get into it, that where is it coming from? And this deep sense of loneliness, that especially when you're alone, you're by yourself in your house, apartment, traveling, in a hotel room, whatever, and if you're alone by yourself long enough, it will kick in. And that's very deeply rooted to the time we were born. So maybe I should get into that and talk about it tomorrow because we're running out of time. Um, so what you're saying is absolutely valid and you're not the only person. Almost everyone on this planet is dealing with it one way or the other. And then I just crave to just um, you know, connect with others that also have an open heart and emotionally sensitive so they could feel me, but I don't, I don't see that so I get disappointed. I understand that. That's why a lot of us are looking for our spiritual community or we joining different ashrams, different spiritual communities because there you're going to find conscious people who are working on themselves and their concentration, their focus is not the material world and their focus is freedom and love. So 
This is a very good thing. How about if we talk about this tomorrow? Sure. Okay, that would be great. Yeah, I appreciate you brought it up. Uh, yeah. Hello, Lee. Sarah Lee. Are you there? You ask. Oh, there you are. Hi. I, I'm trying to unmute you. you. I think you need to. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Or, okay. Okay. I can hear you too. Hi. You have a question? Not, first of all, very good. Nice to see you. And thank you for interviewing me yesterday. I really enjoyed it. And uh, <laughs> we, we had a radio interview. Uh, Lee is from Ireland. And she has her own radio show, and uh, and she was kind enough to interview me yesterday. So uh, the interview, we're going to put it up very soon. As soon as it's ready, we'll we'll put it up. It's coming out tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Um, well. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, no, listening there, I was just, uh, it was coming into my awareness to, to ask the question, you know, um, how do we stay there? Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Like, 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 you talk an awful lot about the external and, and it's happening externally. Okay, so for example, you, you, you brought up a beautiful uh, point, you know, where do you experience thought and how do you experience the turbulence of thought? Right. in your being, yeah. So for me, I don't really experience thought necessarily as a thought in my mind, as in it comes in and, you know, I'm thinking a construction or about it. I feel it in my body, usually in my solar plexus. I feel a disturbance in my beingness, in my body, um, usually in my solar plexus, sometimes like a pressing down into my heart, you know, onto my chest. I'll feel it like a heat coming up, rising through my body. And I don't necessarily know how to decode it or identify it, but it starts to make me feel very unsafe sometimes in that moment. And I'm trying to stay still and I'm trying to stay grounded in myself, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. You know what I mean? Yes. So, I find that how I am is how I would describe myself is having a nervous system that's quite sensitive. Like, so I kind of feel a lot, you know, that in that way. Okay. So how about if we, I mean, I love to, it's, it's 12 o'clock. So, <laughs> I mean, Two hours went by. Uh, can you open this window just a little bit, please? Thank you. The, um, we don't turn the fan or anything on in the studio because it makes noise, so it's not good for the recording. You're familiar with that. So now nah, it's getting hot in here, so I'm starting to cook. So, okay, thank you, Amir. Um, Well, I'm, I, I think answering both of these questions is going to take more than half an hour. So, uh, you know, it's interesting because the uh, I love this so much that I get lost into this work and the teachings when when I'm sharing. There's a lot of background work in the administrative part or setting things up or making videos or whatever and all the other stuff that are secondary, but you have to do it before you get to this point. But when it comes to the actual teaching, I love it so much that it can go five, six hours and I don't even realize that I've been talking or I've been teaching for all those hours because of the juice. It's so juicy. 
uh, what I say juicy is that we're the lovers of the truth. We're sannyasins. Uh, the true meaning of sannyasin is the, it's a Sanskrit word for the monks on the path, the lovers of the truth. And we gather together in the name of love. We come together because we're all looking for freedom. We're all looking for the ultimate truth. We're all been touched by love of God. And this is so yummy that it's very difficult to let it go because once we come to this energy field, we are at home and we find our brothers, sisters, and we know that we're at the right place. Um, so I have a hard time stopping. <laughs> I'd like to continue. Um, but we said that this event is going to be two hours and I know some of you have plans or going somewhere and or maybe it's late in your countries because we have people from all over the world right now. And some of you it's uh, I think around nine o'clock or ten o'clock at night and uh, for for me it's daytime. So if that's okay with you uh, we continue this tomorrow. Uh, so those who are in Europe, they get a chance to go to bed and get some rest. And then we can continue the work. How's that? Is that okay with everyone? Yeah? Okay. And uh, great. So I'm, I will answer both of your questions to the best of my ability. If that's fine, we'll resume tomorrow. Just um, a quick note for those of you, some of you may not come back tomorrow or whatever. You know, we don't know what's going to happen in life and where life's going to take us. I uh, do have a couple announcements. Is one is that I will be offering a self-awakening mastery workshop and that's going to be in the middle of November. Uh, what are the dates? November... November 13th to the 15th is going to be the Self Mastery Workshop. I'm just putting it out uh, so you're aware of it. It's going to be four hours a day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And uh, registration is open. That's that. As well as um, I do offer, I have this year created a one-on-one -on -one uh, tailor-made program. It's called Life Training Program. And it's for those spiritual seekers who are very determined and are willing to invest the time into their own development. And they can't get over the hump. And uh, they need a one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I've never been able to offer that in this way because it's, it's a program that lasts from three months to five months. And uh, I was never able to offer it because I've been traveling and going to back and forth to Europe three times a year. So it's very difficult to be engaged in this program, but this is the first time that I'm able to offer that. So if you're interested in it, you, you're welcome to write to me. Um, my email is info at zaratustra.tv and we'll set up a consultation time and uh, we talk about your situation and your needs and we'll go from there and see how we can, how I can help you. So that's available too. For the moment, I'd like to thank you for joining me. Um, I send you my love, wherever you are, lots of love and light to you, blessings, and I can barely wait for us to get together tomorrow. I am so excited. So.
Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Sending you my love. And feel free to share this information with your uh, brothers, sisters. And if you feel like someone can benefit from this teaching and sharing, just give them the link. And uh, they're welcome to join us. Much love. Namaste. God bless.